Well, as usual on Sunday, to start with, I give my Sunday sermon. And as I look out the, uh, the sky, I mean, it is dark and it is gloomy out there. But actually, there is some good news as well as some challenging news. The good news, you may recall just two weeks ago on my Sunday sermon, I predicted that there was change in the air. And I gave some of the things that I thought would change in the coming weeks. And already, just two weeks later, four of those changes, those U-turns in government policy, have already happened. For example, there's been a change in the cladding policy. There's been a change in the vaccine passport policy. A change in masks they're going. A change in the isolation time policy. So there is change in the air. And much of that, actually, is really good news. And it's important to highlight the good news. And I think there is more to come. But I really want my Sunday sermon today actually to focus on something that I don't think has had enough coverage and enough exposure and that is the issue of furlough. And we all remember at the start of the pandemic when we were all told to stay at home and there was huge concern, massive anxiety amongst all of us. Actually one of the good early initiatives was the furlough scheme and credit to HMRC who actually and credit where credit's due, they implemented this scheme promptly, efficiently, by all accounts. And it was designed to save jobs, to prevent people being made redundant, designed to prevent, in particular, small firms from going under, to stop the anxiety and economic catastrophe and collapse. And it achieved that, which was brilliant. But let's be very clear about the furlough scheme. It was not designed to boost company profits, to prop up profits, to enable chief execs and chairmen to take out massive bonuses and for shareholders to take out massive dividends, having taken out big amounts from the furlough scheme. No, it was designed to protect jobs. That was the key thing. And let's just look at the numbers, shall we? About £68 billion was drawn by companies under the furlough scheme. And what's quite impressive, actually, is well over £1.3 billion has been voluntarily returned by companies to HMRC, to the Treasury, because companies actually did better than they feared initially. And that actually, for a variety of reasons, businesses did keep going. In some cases, uh, they adapted, they changed things, and uh, they were okay, and they kept people employed. And I think that's a really, really creditable thing. And I'd just like to say to those companies that did the right thing, I'd like to say a massive thank you. I think on behalf of all of these, our listeners, our viewers, and actually on behalf of taxpayers. And I'll give you some examples of the sort of companies who did the right thing. The likes of Primark, ASOS, Ikea, Halfords, the next one I like, Hotel Chocolate, one of my favourites, Auto, Auto Trader, and some of the big house builders like Red Row, Taylor Wimpy, Barrett's, some of the biggest estate agents like Knight Frank, and then a bookmaker, William Hill. They gave some 24 million back to the government. The DIY firm, B&Q, they gave about 23 million or so back to the government. And then a magazine, the Spectator magazine, whose subscriptions uh, maintained and actually I think grew, they gave money back voluntarily. And I think that is fantastic. They did the right thing. They looked at it and they had moral integrity. And they knew what the, was the real reason for the furlough scheme and that actually having drawn it, it turned out they didn't need it. So they gave the money back. That's all about adapting and just doing the right thing. But I want to highlight the companies that I'm afraid have taken a very, very different approach. Yes, let's look at an estate agent, shall we? Let's look at Foxton's, for example. They took seven million of furlough money, whilst the chief executive took uh, over one and a half million pounds in salary and bonuses. They're paying dividends. They're now making significant profits again as a listed company. Interestingly, some of their shareholders, some of the pension funds, clearly feel uncomfortable about it, as almost 40% didn't back the remuneration report. So yes, they're back making big profits, they've got substantial cash sums, 
I think, hmm, I'm not so sure that they're doing the right thing. Let's look at JD Sports, shall we? Uh, despite they've taken some £61 million, despite the chairman taking over £4 million in bonus and fees, etc. And the company's predicting a profit uh, for 2021 of well over half a billion pounds. Really? Are you doing the right thing, JD Sports? Then let's look at an accounting firm, shall we? BDO. Apparently they took over £4 million in furlough money. And yet their partners in the firm took well over half a million pounds each in t uh, the last year. I'm thinking, really, guys, did you really need to take that furlough? Should you be giving some of it back? Then let's look at another DIY firm. Whilst the likes of B&Q were giving money back, oh no, Homebase, they've taken some £25 million in furlough, but yet they've paid a big dividend uh, and they've, you know, it, sorry, let me rephrase that. They took over £10 million in furlough and yet they've paid a dividend of over £25 million to their shareholders. I just don't think this is right. I think this is morally wrong. But the biggest one I want to focus on is another uh, bookmaking business, Ladbrokes. Yes, Ladbrokes have taken over a hundred million pounds of taxpayers' cash in furlough. And yet, they will make profits, forecast profits for 2021 of over 200 million pounds. They'll be reinstigating their dividend. And I just think that is completely and utterly wrong. And they gave a trading update in this last week when they were talking about growth, 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 success, success, success. That's great. I love hearing about businesses that are doing well, but not at the expense of taking money from some of the least well off in terms of taxpayers and giving it to well-paid chief executives, chairmen and their shareholders. I just think that is completely and utterly wrong. And what I'm saying to you listeners is perhaps we should vote with our feet with these businesses. Why don't we use the estate agents that have given money back and not use those that I think have done the wrong thing? Maybe we shouldn't shop at JD Sports. Maybe we should use customer power. Maybe we should move our accounts from Ladbrokes, if you're a gambler, to someone like William Hill. Maybe we shouldn't shop at Homebase, but we should use B&Q instead. And maybe I won't use BDO for accounting advice and use someone else. Because actually, we the customers, we have the purchasing power. And I think we need to tell these businesses they're doing the wrong thing. Now, I did actually ask the Ladbrokes bosses if they wanted to come on the show. And the invitation is still open. But you can guess their answer, can't you? Silence. Absolute stony silence. Well, I'm going to keep asking. And actually, I might even go to their shareholders meeting, I think it's in April, May time, and ask the chief exec and the chairman then if we get no reply. Because I think that actually, if your business is doing well, fine, you took furlough in the short term. But if you're now making big profits, if you're handing money back to shareholders in dividends, if you're paying big bonuses, then actually, you should hand the money back to the taxpayers. I think it's morally reprehensible. I think it's greedy. I think it's an abuse of taxpayer support, taking money from the poorest to give it to shareholders amongst whom are some of the wealthiest. I think it gives those businesses a really bad, bad name. I think it gives capitalism a bad name when the chief executives haven't got that moral integrity. And it's one of my personal crusades for this year. I've got a hashtag. Maybe we'll get it going. Hashtag give it back.